Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, episode 50, where we are working our way through Chen Chuan's seminal work, Tea Classification in Theory and Practice. Get your kettle on and let's get rolling. While the tea categories that we all know and love existed before publication in 1979, the criteria for each category were ill defined. And don't run away, but when the show is over, be sure to check out our latest video. 2021 may have been a wash for travel, but you can join Jen Li as she travels across China visiting farmers and tea producers. Have you ever tried pig feet? I was terrified. And of course, Jen and I are always up to our antics, bringing you great content about Chinese tea and its culture, and hopefully bringing you a couple chuckles along the way. Oh boy, am I ever excited about today's tea. My absolute number one favorite, Shui Xian. This tea brings everything that a great tea can bring to the table. Boldness, caramel, floral, chocolate, granite, great structure, mouthfeel, it's all there. And if you know what I'm talking about because you've tried this tea, head on over to our website and leave us a review. If not, add it to your wish list or hopefully you're about to drop it into your guy one right now. Charen is a free tea magazine that Jen and I produce after each tea trip and take you behind the curtain of Chinese tea. To get it, just head over to our website, gentea.ca slash charen. Pop in your email address and enjoy the in-depth articles. Hang in there, folks. We'll be with you shortly for... Sunday Tea Book. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book. Episode 50, where we are working our way through Chen Chuan's seminal work, Tea Classification in Theory and Practice. Get your kettle on and let's get rolling. While the tea categories that we all know and love existed before publication in 1979, the criteria for each category were ill-defined. And don't run away, but when the show is over, be sure to check out our latest videos. 2021 may have been a wash for travel, but you can join Jen Li as she travels across China visiting farmers and tea producers. Have you ever tried pig feet? I was terrified. And of course, Jen and I are always up to our antics, bringing you great content about Chinese tea and its culture, and hopefully bringing you a couple chuckles along the way. Oh boy, am I ever excited about today's tea. My absolute number one favorite, Shui Xian. This tea brings everything that a great tea can bring to the table. Boldness, caramel, floral, chocolate, granite, great structure, mouthfeel, it's all there. And if you know what I'm talking about because you've tried this tea, head on over to our website and leave us a review. If not, add it to your wish list or hopefully you're about to drop it into your guy one right now. Welcome back to Hello. Sunday Tea Book episode 
fifty. Five Yay. zero. Fifty. Not fifteen. Not some other number that might also sound like fifty that I can't think of right now. The actual five zero. <laughs> wow. Hello, Mac McMillan, and hello, Lolo. Hello, Lolo. Wow. Welcome. She adopted wow. the way you say it. Hello. <sighs> Episode 50. I'm freaking out a little bit. I'm super kind of um, wow and excited about today for a bunch of reasons. First, as I said, episode. Hey, Igor, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to episode 50. What is exciting about episode 50? Well, 50 is a round number, so we just get excited about it for some reason. <laughs> also, Shui Xian. I don't know if you saw the pre roll, but I love this tea. I'm so stoked to get into this tea. I'm so stoked to get into Sunday Tea Book episode 50. We got some special stuff in store and for you today. Today is the finale for this article we have been working on tea classification in theory and practice. Tea so, classification in theory and practice, wrapping it up. Wow. Wow. Finale. Awesome. So I won't say much more about other things that have happened during Sunday Tea Book because we do have tea trivia time coming up as usual, and there may be some questions about that. So stay tuned for tea trivia time. Uh, but first I'm gonna dive in because we've got Instagram here. Hello out in Instagram world. Hello Josh in YouTube world. Brief hello. Lolo says 50 congrats. Thank you Lolo. And Time Signature says holy tears of sadness for the fallen kale, but also tears <laughs> of joy for episode 50. Here we go. <laughs> no, no, no. Here we go. Something like that. Sorry if that was a little loud on if you're wearing earbuds and they popped right out, my bad. But uh, anyway, I'm just getting into it. So let's talk about for Hey Suit Tea. Welcome to uh, Sunday Tea Book episode 50. Hello to you, Tea Family. They said hello, Tea Family. That's yeah. awesome. So what is Sunday Tea Book for anybody who's new? Hey, Bodique. Welcome. Kiel159. Also, is that an orange or peach? Orange. Orange. It has a green leaves on it. Yeah, or a tangerine. Okay. <laughs> what is hello. Sunday Tea Book for those of you that are new? All right, Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I, and you guys, we take a book, article, or paper that is jam-packed with great information about Chinese tea and its culture, but is not typically accessible or known in the West. Uh, and, we, uh, and if a translation exists, it needs a little help. And if it doesn't exist, that's why it's one of the reasons why it's probably not accessible in the West. So we take that and we go through it um, page by page, word by word, paragraph by paragraph with you guys. So if you're new, you might be thinking, holy cow, that sounds <laughs> like watching paint dry. It sounds so boring to watch, to translate with people. But over the past six years, working with Jen, with Chinese tea, with tasting notes, with all kinds of information, about Chinese tea and its culture, I noticed that working through those processes with her and asking questions about why is this word like that or what does this word mean or, or when or reading an English article and I would ask her what did they mean by this and she'd look at it and she oh it's a little bit blurry because they didn't. That has been so helpful to understanding Ch Chinese tea and tea in general much better. So we thought let's jump in and share the experience with you guys also I don't always know the word and you guys have been tremendously helpful when we're struggling with a tricky translation. You guys throw out suggestions, words that might fit better, ways to say it that are better. It's just been a great experience. So here we are at episode 50 of Sunday Tea Book with you guys. So I'll start, I'll say this a few times, but I'll start right away. So Instagram folks, you're going to want to jump over to the YouTube side because we actually bring up the document with some annotations sometimes. We've got tea trivia on the YouTube side. We've got all kinds of fun happening on the YouTube side. So <laughs> run away from Instagram and run into YouTube run and uh, meet us there. We're not going to say goodbye just yet, but I'm going to tell you a few times, give you some time to warm up your YouTube machines. Anyway. Cool. Wow. Yeah. So that is Very a, exciting. So this uh, is the beginning of episode of 50. One. Sunday tea book, I guess. Yeah, it's exciting. Yes. It's another, exciting. I just, as you were talking about, another good, interesting thing, uh, interesting thing, good thing, why we wanted to do this is because not many uh, great Chinese articles uh, about Chinese tea are available here. So that's kind of fulfilling in the gap, what we're doing now. Yes, a mm. lot of them are not available at all. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, while well, we finish this article today, we're, we will be sipping some Shui Xian. 
with you. Shwesian. I'm so mm, stoked about Shwesian. Very happy about having some. Sweet Tea asks very on first. Instagram, do you need to jump to YouTube right now? Yes, you need to jump to YouTube right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to answer them quickly so they can uh, do would that. Would you like to switch the camera? Oh, yes. I would love to. We have a lot of gadgets today. Dun, da, 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 da. See if your Instagram, if you jump to YouTube, you're going to see the tea up close. Here it comes. Uh, since the last time, a little bit uh, hesitated to show that on the camera. It would just uh, be all. Oh, oh look nice. at that leaf, sharp That's and really crisp, nice. dark, almost black, deep brown, deep dark chocolate brown. Hints, the ever so slightest hint of maybe a. A red orange. Oh boy, I'm excited to um, sip this tea. I'm telling you. When do we last to have some rock tea? It's been a while, I think. I don't know. It's been a while. Mm. I really like rock tea. I really love shui xian. I love all teas. Yeah. Do you like rock tea? I think that's uh, shui xian is uh, your favorite. It's my tea. number one fave. No, my right? number one fave. Yeah. Mm. Oh, cool. Sweet tea from Instagram has jumped over. Welcome to the show. So now oh, you've got cool. the brew cam view. The brew cam view cam. See what we can do on YouTube. I'm just showing off now. <laughs> All right, awesome. Right. So let us know what's in your cup. We mm -hmm. love to hear. If you're brewing Shui Xian along with us, let us know. If you're brewing something else, uh, let us know. We I love it. I think uh, Mac Macmillan was having some shampoo a moment ago. He yes. Showed, uh, he yeah, we saw some that pictures. on the uh, we saw that on the Discord channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I threw up the Discord. If you're new to our community, you can check out the link down below in the YouTube description. If you want to join the Discord, it is an absolutely lovely community, which I have to attribute entirely to you guys who are part of it. It's just so beautiful how you guys share your pictures and share all that stuff. It's uh, it's been great. Hmm. Um, want to have a sniff? I'm gonna have a sniff. I would love to. All right. One thing I've noticed. You let me know if you've seen this too out there in YouTube and Instagram land. The aroma is divine, but it's not overpowering. I've noticed that about good teas is they're a little bit, I don't want to say they're greedy, but on the aroma, they're conservative. This has chocolate. Hints of the mineral are underneath there. It has there. a little bit of citrus A little well. bit of citrus very and some tiny floral. Very tiny teaser. Very tiny, right? Mm -hmm. oh, just a gorgeous. And this is the... Oh. The brew cam gone? I think no, the so. brew cam is back. I have is complete it? control. Com complete control. <laughs> Just want to show you the leaf amount. I'm a little uncoordinated, but I do have some going okay, on. Okay, so it's a kind of a two third of the guy one. Mm, pretty Be generous with your rock tea leaf mm. amount. Mm. Good amount of leaf and the fast infusion is important for It's the way to get the uh, really great flavors out. Mm -hmm. Lolo is having a winter take one yin 2020. Uh, I think Modique might have asked us if this tea is manufactured in Taiwan. This tea is from Wuyi in Fujian province, China. So great question though. Oh, little hints of Creamy. floral, creamy floral. Mm. Mm. Take some time to uh, smell your gaiwan lid as you go throughout your uh, Gong Fu session, guys. It's really enlightening. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. And it looks like Boudique is having a Shu Puar from 2008, pressed in 2014. Hey, what took them so long? Cool. All right, a little bit about uh, tea classification in theory and practice. Yes, it's an article by Professor Chen Chuan who proposed this concept. Um, that's actually wrong. He didn't propose the concept of a tea typing. He mm. organized the tea type. Mm. Green tea, white tea, all those terms we've been so familiar with nowadays, they existed for a long time. But what exactly, mm. how does one tea fit in one category? He yeah. you organized could, You could that. say he proposed the concept of having some Systematic. stricter scientific right. definition. Mm. That's right. And this uh, paper is one of the uh, cornerstones for this whole system. So if you just want to know quickly what's the difference between, say, green tea or, mm. and white tea, uh, <laughs> this might not be the video for You've you. You've come to the wrong place. <laughs> we have a quicker video, like 5-10 minutes explaining mm. the key differences and uh, what differentiate them. But in mm. this video, we will dive deeper 
to what exactly is the difference? Is that just the process? Because a lot of time you would see people say, oh, poor is different, it doesn't belong anywhere, or uh, mm. is that white tea, is that green tea? Uh, all those questions in this, paper, uh, in this paper, in this sections we have been doing, it really answers a lot of uh, debate or uh, mm. confusions that's mm. out there about uh, what tea type should a tea go through or um, like a kind of deep in, uh, dive into a deeper meaning of this tea type thing. Again, it's not fundamental. As a tea drinker, you don't need to know any of those to enjoy tea. Uh, this is just uh, for us to have some fun, learn a little bit tea knowledge and be a little bit nerdy. Mm. So, um, Anywhere from a little bit nerdy all <laughs> the way lot. up to a lot nerdy. Yes. So that and is... If you have been stick around for this session and like a it's a, it's a great congrats to you guys too because this is mm. not just a random paper. It's not a blog post. It's right. nothing. It's from a tea professional and this is like reading the... Uh, how should I say, like those science magazines, like an academic special, paper. yes, mm. special <laughs> papers that is not uh, uh, kind or of uh, targeted at uh, the uh, general public, general public, yeah. the yeah. tea drinker. So, yeah, you stick around, and uh, we really appreciate that. And you should give yourself a little pat on the back. <laughs> yes, you yeah. did. it's it's been a hard. Yeah, this was a pretty heavy document, with, but it did have some really nice nuggets. With a lot nuggets. of technical lot of, uh, details and stuff. Yeah, and a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of nice nuggets though for, um, for people like maybe just getting into tea or, or with some experience but looking for some, you know, next level stuff. It definitely had some of that. This tea has some of that. Holy crow. The aroma has that mineral with light floral, just like... A rock tea, sometimes you get the feeling that from folks that ro a rock tea should just be really bold and in your face because it's really a manly tea and uh, like that, like, uh, like like a mixed martial arts fighter, for example. It's time signature. Um, but a rock tea should be, uh, should be strong, but also have a, that uh, elegance and dignification, which is that floral hint, that little floral note on the aroma and in the sip. You will see this term a lot, yang gu hua xiang. Whenever we talk about rock tea, okay, mm. in Chinese term, yang gu hua xiang, rocky and floral. <laughs> yeah, rocky and floral, and this one has that on the nose and in the sip. And it's creamy, it's not mm. like a greasy creamy, it's just like that deeper type of uh, floral that renders yeah. that uh, creaminess. Yeah. If you've ever smelled a flower and it has a bit of a thickness to the aroma, it's kind yes. of in that domain. Yes, it's more of a thickness rather than mm. think about a cream, mm. creamy. And Anytime. the uh, liquor has a hint of like a hint of dark chocolatey ness, granite. Mm. Mm. So have you guys uh, had <sighs> like we oolong before, or do you like it? Or do you have a special cultivar you like a lot? Because Shui Xian is uh, his favorite, and mm. Shui Xian is actually a. Uh, if you go to Wuyi, you notice locals love Shui Xian. They have preference on Shui Xian. The way they talk, even though they could have a lot of teas and they drink different mm. teas, Shui Xian mm. has just like. Place in their heart. That's right, huh? yeah. So, um. I guess uh, I didn't know that, so I'm not just copying. I just really genuinely love this tea. I got into this. I started to fall in love with this tea as soon as we got started. It kind of became my mm -hmm. favorite. Mm -hmm. Grabbed me right away. Had a few really great experiences with it as well. If you check out our vlogs, you'll see we were in Wuyi and had I had like a I got chills from a a Lao Tsong Shui Xian that I sipped at at a mm. producer's shop, and then we went to the mountain. Check that out. I'll put a I'll put a link down below. Uh, later to that, mm -hmm. the Wii vlog. Mm. There's a bunch of them, so maybe just watch them all. Mm. Right, yeah. Oh, that's so really today good. we will do things slightly different, which we usually start with. Uh, we usually tea warm trivia, up with a little tea trivia. Yeah. But this time we prepare a little bit longer tea trivia. 
And we're going to do that after we finish the, the episode book. 50 tea trivia. And we're going to do it up at the end. This is not to punish you guys because you guys <laughs> always stick around to the end. You guys are the best that way. This is just to shake it up a bit and have a little bit of a celebration. Mm -hmm. And it's so, a longer one. So that costs a little bit more. Yeah, that's time, right. So. So um, yeah, we've got the bonus questions for episode 50. Mm. So stick around for that. If at any point during this, uh, during this show, during this live cast, whatever you want to call it, if at any point you're like, wow, this is really useful or geez, that guy is super funny and goofy, just give us a <laughs> thumbs up. Uh, it really helps the channel grow. It really means a lot to us. So if you could take a minute, if you think, geez, I've already had enough good content. I already want to give them a thumbs up. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Instagram folks, I see uh, Jan's Food Steps has just joined us. Jump over to YouTube right away. We're just about to say goodbye on the Instagram side. We've got tea trivia on the YouTube side. We've got a little 50th episode kind of party coming up at the end. We've got great Sunday tea book content as we work our way through tea classification and theory and practice today talking about black so jump over to YouTube, Instagram. I'm going to have to say goodbye, but thank you for joining and bye-bye. Hmm? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh yeah, live video has ended on Instagram, but it's just getting started here on YouTube. So uh, that is awesome. I'm going to pick a weird thumbnail as I do. Oh, that's weird. Also weird. <laughs> I don't know how many people, when they pick uh, like uh, covers and stuff, they want to pick the we weird go. one. <laughs> I think the weird ones always get people. No matter how many episodes we go through, he still insists on putting the cell phone as far as possible. Because this, <laughs> this is our zone, right? And it's kind true, of where the tea could be true, spilled true, true. and stuff. So I'm always nervous to put stuff here. But she yes. does need the phone. She does have the phone. Everything's going to be okay. Yes, Everything I use the phone for okay. the Chinese version as we quickly go through the, this section right which on is about black tea so in terms of a black tea I hang on don't dive in yet oh you can't dive in yet it's not time whoa hold the phone i got my checklist i got it going on i you just actually have a checklist i do have a, a checklist. checklist with a box in the front i even put little boxes it's super cute <laughs> um so what I wanted to do before we get started, one mm -hmm. of the traditional things that I like to do is I like to just get you guys in sync with us, okay? Because you might be following along with your PDF at home. We're gonna dive into Sunday Tea Book episode 50 right now. The link is down in the description. You can grab that PDF from the uh, French agricultural site that posted it. They have the translation that we're working with there. And you, we will be on page. Mm -hmm. Let me find out what page we'll be on. We're working on page 300 and starting on 341 today in the, uh, the way it's written on the paper in the document. In the Acrobat, it is 14 out of 17. It is section six, the classification of red tea. So that'll get you guys going. Link down below, grab the PDF. We're on page 341 or 14, depending on how your Adobe Acrobat or whatever viewer you're using presents that. Please dive in. <laughs> Ready to swing? Okay, so talk about black tea. I think most of you guys are very, very familiar with black tea and probably know a lot. Uh, but today's uh, black tea is a, mostly talk about uh, Chinese black tea with a little bit touch of the Western black tea, which I wouldn't dive in too much. Mm. It's good reference for you guys to, if you want to learn about. But, Go ahead. I was oh. just going to clarify. I didn't mean okay. to totally interrupt, but I just want to say that there's a little bit of touch on the Western style black tea, mm. still made in China, of course. Right, right. Every, all the tea he writes about is the Chinese tea, but mm. some is made for export. So it dives in, but as you said, not right. diving into that one too much today. So talking, of, uh, and also because it's a uh, English style mm. uh, tea word expressed in Chinese, then translate back to English. So <laughs> I actually don't think it's uh, as valuable like a lot mm. of the uh, tea terms uh, that we are Great familiar point. with nowadays with the uh, Western teas like uh, bo, bo, he, that word. Anyway, those are grades, uh, what, uh, the uh, tips, the stuff. You have lots of uh, readings, lots of oh, material. Pico. pico, yes, different grades. Although, so that word is totally lost in the translation because it was pico, then translated in Chinese, then uh, Michael Saltz from Cambridge yeah. uh, translated back to English. So it's uh, misaligned. 
So if you want to learn right. about a Western style uh, black tea, I think there are way better materials out there. Yeah, that's a and, great point. And uh, for us, we will be focusing on the uh, Chinese portion and uh, not too much uh, in detailed technical thing as we actually spend a lot of right. the time at length uh, in previous uh, episodes. Uh, Don't say the document. We spent a lot of time in previous episodes talking about the details of Chinese black tea and we right. will and you can check those out in our Sunday tea, go tea book backlog. But uh, I have a question about it. Don't wow. give it away. Okay, you can give it away. It's at the end. See if they're paying Oh, okay, okay. See, I, I don't know what's uh, what's going on with uh, tea trivia. So. Tea trivia time okay, is a complete a surprise Anyways. for her too. <laughs> Anyways, I will say that anyway, eventually we don't know. So in today, I will yeah, focus yeah. on translation issues, which is, uh, this is in Chinese and in the English version, it wasn't very clear or I think it wasn't translated uh, right or there's T turns. <laughs> it's just fun. That's I like so... it. It's a little bit odd. I could see where it was going. I'm like, whoa, don't wreck my oh, question. No. You're going to give, but I should have let you because it's actually a good because it's, okay. it's so later. You know, yeah. would have been see Test if, you, if guys, you guys are paying yeah, attention. Make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> Uh, oh, um, so, uh, okay, I lost my notes here. Oh, let me grab that. I got them here. I'm always got your backup notes Thank right you. here. Perfect. We're such a great team. Thanks. Probably shouldn't applaud myself so uh, so generously on live uh, on live uh, YouTube, live TV, live whatever this is. Yes, I don't know why my cell phone failed me so many times, and I still insist on using that mm. for this. So anyways, in talking about black tea, so first it points out that uh, bl uh, black tea, as in Chinese, is hong cha, red tea. It's not really red, it's a red, red tea and red liquor. But this red refers mm. to a yellowish red. That's why you would have uh, black tea that has golden liquor color, orange mm. liquor color. And in the translation, it says uh, thoroughly oxidized, but uh, more accurate, uh, true to the original, is deep oxidized and mm. I think a thoroughly could be misleading when it has the con con connotation of completely oxidized. completely right. yeah which is on paper that's how it's supposed to be while in real life and a lot of times most of the situation when you have black teas they are not like a hundred percent because uh, nobody's really testing it it's at the really deep oxidized level and um, you know, sometimes you have some black teas and it's really astringent and stuff. If you examine the brew leaves, you will notice, yes, there's still some green in the leaves and stuff. Um, that's what you can notice that uh, by thoroughly, it really just means it has a really deep grade of oxidation yeah. rather than like 100% thoroughly. Yeah. Okay, then that confused me for a while. I have to say when we talk about red teas and then we would have sometimes have a, a red, a, a red tea or a black tea and the liquor was more like a, almost like a yan cha color, mm. a little bit different. Like it still has a bit of that red, more red tinge, mm. but I was like, is there, and it wasn't a mediocre one. It was a top grade black tea and it tasted top grade. The mouthfeel thick, full, sweet, balanced. But it took me a while to figure, like you had to explain that to me, that the, uh, it's not, def it doesn't have to be red. I put my cup super far away, whoops. 50, but we're getting better every time. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, continuing talking about the four steps of uh, black tea process. I will use black tea here in the talk as it's mostly <laughs> well known as black tea uh, mm. in the West. So uh, it talk about a wet reddening, which is a weird, it's a tea term called a wo hong, or early mm -hmm. times called a fermenting. This fermenting is uh, in Chinese fa jiao. What happened is in oral, like when we just uh, talk, it wasn't very clear. In, we use fermenting and oxidation. No, we could, as the word fa jiao, could mean fermenting, could mean oxidation when we talk about tea it was really loose not academically uh, but in the real practice in the tea farm when farmers and producers say that it wasn't really uh, scientifically brewed in. right it's uh interuse we just call it's colloquial somewhat right yes black tea fa jiao 
uh, puar fa jiao. But uh, if you want to be more uh, uh, like uh, strict. accurate no. or strict, mm -hmm. so that's more like uh, oxidation. And uh, wet reddening is a literal translation of wo hong kind of thing. That just means uh, oxidizing. I think sometimes you will see that in uh, black tea, like a pro processing flow chart, they call that oxidizing. Mm, right. Yeah. And later on, you talk about the small seed, seasoned, fine cut, flower blend later. So those are types of small seed, xiao zhong, like uh, uh, lapsan su chong is the representative one. Seasoned is not seasoned, it's a gong fu tea. It's mm. not seasoned tea. Fine cut, it's uh, the China, uh, like in China, we produce this kind of tea for export. Flower mm -hmm. blend is blended, sanded, like rose black teas. Right on. Yeah. And the last bit, there's an interesting thing is when the article points out that oh, if there's a like a Western black teas, we call we add one more grade. Fenji means grading. Right. Grading black tea, not uh, it put a like a pin in there. Sorry. I wasn't trying to rush you. Really? I just bumped my cup by accident. Oh, okay, okay. Anything in your way, bump it. Mm. Okay. Uh, shall we check on the uh, comments? Yeah, we'll come back to Fenji in a minute. Let's check on right. some comments, because that was an interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, section. For me, I was a bit confused when he said, oh, and then if, and there can be another one if we talk about these four energies, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Mm. We got tons of comments rolling in here. Let's see what's going on. Whew. There we go. Ooh. Kale is brewing a nice, a long jing with a, the dry leaf is a bit nutty. I love that about Lomjing. That little yeah. soy nutty aroma is delightful. Bubblegum orchid floralness. Oh, neat. So oh, it's that got that. That sounds very cheerful. That sweetness is popping out, probably. Mm. What do you think? Oh. Sphinxay Masters is going to have a. Probably kombucha. I'm not sure. It's spelled kabus kabuseka. Oh, no. Maybe that's a Japanese. Let us know what that is. Uh, yeah. SVN Kingsai. I don't know how to pronounce your handle, sorry, but let us know what tea that is, that kabusecha. I'm interested to know more about that. Mm. I know I'm not super good at clarifying. That's a really, uh, really nice description you gave there. Yeah, I think that whatever comes to your mind is, mm. is kind of the best because um, it's less trying to fit what's happening to you into something. It's like sometimes I even describe Tea, note, tea flavor notes with sort of music genres or specific songs mm -hmm. because that's what comes into my mind and I don't have a flavor that matches it but I have a feeling or a, or a tune or whatever. So it's, and it's always interesting when we're talking about tea tasting notes, like what's the point of tea tasting notes really? If someone's never had an apple, I stole this metaphor yeah, from you. Right. I love this metaphor though, right? If someone's never had an apple, um, it's really just about impossible to describe to them how it tastes. But once they've had an apple and you're, you're kind of getting down into the nitty gritty, it can be kind of interesting to share the notes. The whole interesting point of tasting notes is actually sharing them to see, oh, how did that hit you? How did it hit you? How is mm. it hitting me? And bounce those all around. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Time Signature was impressed with the uh, aroma notes, I think, from earlier. I think I had a bit of a flurry because I was so excited about the tea. I kind of started um, just dropping aroma notes like crazy. <laughs> I gotta say though, he says that he's had di has difficulty with the details sometimes, and I have to say that I have the same same thing. And uh, I just love this tea, so I guess I'm more used to describing it because people, are, you know, what do you like about it? I say that a lot, but I often find, especially with a brand new tea, I don't know. Let me know if this happens to you guys with the brand new tea when you get a a taste of it, and especially if it's really good tea and it really just hits you in all the right ways. I find they tend to be so complex, they're really tricky to uh, articulate. And, and why bother? You're just supposed to enjoy it anyway, right? Mm. <laughs> you don't get extra points for articulating what, what you're experiencing. In my book. <laughs> oh. 
and Lolo is still looking for a little picture to send us. Hopefully, you can find it and pop that up on the Reddit. Cool. Reddit? Uh, I did. I said Reddit. <laughs> I meant I meant Discord. We got Discord there. <laughs> Link is down below if you want to join that community of uh, great, uh, great people. Tons of cool pictures and stuff there. Uh, you got a, a compliment on your dress. I have to say, I love it too. I almost, oh, thank you. I almost passed out from Bodie. Bodie? Oh, yeah, yeah. When, thank when you. she walked in the room, I almost passed out. <laughs> she was fanning me. Wake up, it's almost Sunday tea book. <laughs> Ooh, toasted bread. Black Benny Fuki tea has aroma notes of toasted Ooh. bread. And I did something naughty. The time signature point out, hey, look what you did, Phil. But I don't know what I did anymore. Ah, so where's, what a tricky question. I don't know. I like that question. I think mm -hmm. we, where is the dividing line between oolong and black tea? 96, 97, 98? That's, that's a, a great, that's a really, great question. That's a really, really, really great question. That is not, a, um, how should I say? And that is not, not a definer. Uh, I got that question a lot, mm -hmm. right? So partially oxidized as a fully oxidized. People really think, uh, and it's clear why people would tend sure. to think like that. I used to, like when I first like learned tea, line. I feel like that. Right. Zero to 100%, mm -hmm. Wulong falls in between, uh, 100% is that. But and zero is green. That's right. right, but in truth it's not, in fact it's just not like that. That's just a way to say, to give a rough idea of, <clears throat> of their oxidation levels. Mm -hmm. um, like we're defining, so again, defining different types of tea are not based on uh, fermentation levels, are based on the process. Mm. What happens in real process is not number based. Yeah. I know sometimes when you go to stores and stuff and talk to people, oh, this is a 60% wool fermentation oolong. Those are also bulk, uh, roughly. What ballpark. I mean, ballpark, yes, mm -hmm. like uh, median level, right. rather than give, because that kind of implies that there's a six, three percent oxidation where right. stuff really uh, it reinforce that uh, kind of a, uh, almost misconcept ruler. of yeah. one straight line of a fermentation mm -hmm. level. It's about how they are processed. Mm -hmm. What are the key step? You will find uh, sometimes you will taste a wulong that tastes like almost like a black tea. Right, but uh, it's still labeled as oolong because it goes through the oolong process, and people think that's still oolong. You could have a black, almost like black tea style oolong, and mm. you could have a black tea that really didn't process well, and uh, only like I've seen, say, eighty percent oxidized black tea, but it tastes like a black tea. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is this number is something to. Uh, I don't think the intention was to mislead, just to give people, because I a found guideline, in the, right? Yeah, and I found in the West, the people really wants to have a number to mm. say that. Because in China, what we say is a, is a full, and China, old times we say oolong, we say in Chinese, 50% uh, oxidized is oolong. Ban fa jiao, ban means half. Mm. So there are people like, oh, so that's 50%, but it actually means nowadays it's corrected as partially oxidized. Right. So you see, there is a cultural difference that make that really hard to communicate or right. make that uh, the other part would want to ask the next question is, oh, when you say this is a median oxidized, how median is 40 or 70? You know, people want that. So, um, mm sometimes you will have this ballpark in terms of what is a, so in terms of what's wulong what's black tea has nothing to do with its oxidation level it just the result happened to be like that right but it's not defined by its oxidation level yeah it's the overall process that's really mm -hmm. the defining factor did i explain that i feel like i got that a little bit i, I think the short not answer, very clear but i think it's pretty clear the answer is there is no line Yes. It's if the line is in the, the presence of a line is an illusion created mm -hmm. by this sort of concept of percentage oxidation, green tea at the left, black tea at the right, oolong in the middle. But that's as we've learned throughout this document is uh, it's mm -hmm. 
it's the whole process, it's the dry leaf appearance, it's the liquor color, it's the liquor characteristics and flavors, mm. it's the steps, it's this totality. I forgot this. It's the Such a good question, I totally forgot my brew. We got a tea, a Sunday tea book over steep, yes. So, but anyway, it's the totality that makes up the tea type, so there's no magic line in the mm -hmm. oxidation sand that divides black and tea. But what a great question. Mm -hmm. I am so glad you brought it up. And everybody, everybody, uh, please shoot out your questions. We love to hear them. There is no question um, too complicated. Well, maybe there's too complex, ask it anyway. And there's no question too simple, okay? We're here to uh, kind of help each other out. You guys can chat even on the, uh, on the YouTube chat with amongst yourselves if you want to throw out your, your answers, if you think you know know the answer, don't be shy. It's all about sharing um, ideas and information and learning. Mm. Um, and Kale, yeah, so like, like Kale says, like thanks for sharing that because uh, yeah. that's what I thought, but yeah. it's great to confirm. So great question and uh, great, um, yeah. great session and great, you know what? Another thing, I'm gonna come back to the tea. Another thing about really good quality tea we just had a, a Sunday tea book over steep, pretty severe one, and it's not bitter, it's not astringent, it's uh... I did a flash through brew after. Oh, you did? Yeah. I was gonna say it. Do, do you guys do that? But when I over brew, I know I'm over brew, this is pretty fresh tea and stuff, and I, I just don't like to force myself to just Drink just it. tough it down, yeah, right? Because so it's gonna be strong. I right? often do a flash brew after. I missed it, you were so flashy that I didn't even notice and I was a bit shocked. No, it's how pretty it good, right? It's it very of, good. It yes. wasn't as strong. I was expecting it to be a bit more strong, but you kind of, uh, you did a great correction. I if I drink that really strong, I'm gonna be so hungry. Right. Mm. So for the folks that don't, <laughs> maybe don't know what, uh, so what happened was the oversteep. I think anybody who d d does Gong Fu is familiar with that. So I won't go into what an oversteep is. You forget your tea and then it comes out and it's like, oh my God. The flash brew is you just get the water in, the water out as quick as you possibly can. And that way you're not just pouring water into the tea to dilute it, but you're still giving it a little mm. essence. Anyway, that's a little... Mm. I learned that trick from my mom because mm. old times when I have too strong, I just put it in straight water. And Which she works. Said, it works, does, but affects the taste. It does. The better way to do is do a flash infusion. Right. So there you go. Mm. There's a little tidbit that you, uh, you could only get here. Hmm. I sometimes like, yeah, of course. So time signature sometimes like a really strong overbrew tea. Mm. And that is uh, honestly, same here every now and then, especially if I need a little a little jolt to get me going in the morning, oh, I will do- uh, My cell phone doesn't work, I gotta remember. I that. will do a <laughs> bit of an overbrew. And sometimes it's just cause I like the tea like that. And mm -hmm. that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. So continue on the uh, paper, we talk, uh, then it, after the black tea, got divided into uh, five categories, it dive into each subcategories. So first is Xiao Zhong Hong Cha. If you're wondering what that is, La uh, Sam Su Zhong is the example of that. And it has a very uh, typical step called, here the translation is called oven heated or something. There's no oven, like, uh, I mean, Right. At least in North America, you think about the oven is putting that in, but it's more pan. There's no oven thing. But right. Yeah, it's more like a pan frying, not really an oven thing. And uh, oven reddening is a mistranslation. It's a tea term called guo hong guo. The red is not talking about the tea again. It's talking about a high temperature pan that turn red. You mm. know, the old iron metal pan. So Guo Hong Guo is uh, one of the typical step of making La Sang Su Zhong. And later on, you talk about Yan Xiao Zhong. Uh, I realize if I don't mention that, it's pretty hard to say. Pretty hard to say it. So basically, so <laughs> I'm going to say it, okay? I'm just going to say it. I cannot okay. do it. Um, so this part in terms of uh, what's the different, uh, what is uh, Lapsan Su Chong, or what are the types of Chinese black tea, Lapsan Su Chong, Gong Fu black tea, and uh, or, or what is what we often hear, the smoke Su Chong, which is not Lapsan Su Chong. Yan Xiao Zhong is not a Lapsan Su Chong. In terms of their differences and stuff, in another video in 
Sunday tea book mm. about uh, black tea. Uh, we uh, talked about it in detail yeah. and uh, explained what's the difference and why this name become uh, a little bit confused. Uh, and misuse. Yeah, I'll put the link down below. I just took a note to. Uh, I try not to mention your questions. No, that's okay. I realized I didn't know what you were talking about, but I will put the link down below to that video because we did get into depth in it there, mm. and uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to say something else, but I forgot. <laughs> Great. Um, so continue talking about uh, here are a few tea terms here. If you say if you see straight tea in this paper, it means malta, which is, doesn't mean straight shaped tea. It means uh, it's a process. The tea finish the first phase of process, so it's dried, mm. but it still have to go through siftings and re roastings and stuff. So that kind of tea in Chinese uh, tea term is called malta. Mm. And uh, another thing you will see is a coarse, coarse dried, uh, uh, coarse all over the place, coarse heating, heating, all those coarse. Interesting thing, the origin in Chinese, the coarse and straight both share the same character, mao. What it means is finish the first phase. So it's like the first uh, heating or the first drying. We call that mao hong. Yeah, it's one of those tricky words to translate, yes. and I don't think uh, it's it, not quite. It's not like wrong, but right. uh, if somebody really dig into what's coarse heating, it mm. could be uh, confusing or misleading. You might think, oh, yeah. we don't fully dry the tea or something. Yeah, and straight tea is very confusing too because it just sounds like not blended, not mm. blended with flowers and stuff. But no, it's right. actually just mao cha. It's like kind of a. Uh, um, yeah, straight tea is you can be straight up like a no yeah. mixing. It could be just yeah. a tea it's leaf being straight, but it just means mao cha. It's one of those terms I prefer to just see mm. mao cha in the text nowadays, or uh, and fig and explain it because uh, it's a tricky term. It, yeah. It's not quite unfinished either, but it's it, it has its own definition inside of tea, yes. which you really gotta ask about. Mm. And. Then there's an interesting <laughs> translation about Chong'an uh, Tong Wood Department oh, in Fujian. I totally missed that. So I was like, wow, that's uh, interesting because it's a, a name of an area in Fujian. I want to just tell them when, okay, when I was okay. reading it as an, as an English person reading that, and I still know a little bit about tea, a little bit about black tea, maybe a bit more than a little bit um, as things have progressed over the last six years. I had no idea. I thought this was like, oh, back in the day in the 1970s and there 80s. There might be some special department. There must have been some special department, even controlling the wood to make sure the tea was good for export right. or something. I thought it was a special department of little elves who chop the wood and get it ready for the <laughs> smoking. I don't know. No elves, no elves. But you know what I mean? I was kind of on that page. Like, cause, because I did realize it's actually double confusing. I did realize that back in, that, in the day, there were more... Uh, there is pretty strict process around quality levels and this and that about Chinese tea. So I thought, oh, they're very, it must be part of that infrastructure. Mm. So it totally blindsided me. What is it? So it's a uh, Tong Mu Guan. If you like a black tea, you probably heard of it. Tong Mu Guan. Uh, Tong wasn't translated, so you keep the pinyin. Wood, Mu got translated. Guan department? Uh, I guess so. But anyway, so <laughs> the name got uh, partially translated. Yeah. Chong'an is the area. So Tom just Mugwan want to is, point that out. To yeah, Tom the black Mugwan. tea lovers will know it's the authentic sort of black tea area or whatever, mm. or it's at least uh, Lapsang. Yeah. Whoa, really sensitive, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe let me drive. <sighs> oh, I don't know if you guys could see that. <laughs> I didn't know you put that on. Anyways, continue on the, the next paragraph. They uh, at the end they talk about full leaf means uh, full leaf gong fu and tender. It's also tender gong fu, zhen uh, ye mm. gong fu and xi uh, nen gong fu. Different uh, style of gong fu tea based on the leaf uh, grade, grade and tenderness or right. which part of the plant. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to swing back to yours too? No, just keep rolling, please. Thank you. Cool. That's it. Yeah, because I know there's a little bit left. Oh, right That's on. why I'm trying to scroll it. Uh, and last bit is talk about uh, sanded tea, which has an interesting 
translations as there's a, a word perfume. You're like, oh, that might be some heavy sanity. The perfume is just a Chinese uh, Xiang Hong Cha. It's mm. a type, it's just in the name, a type of a black tea. Uh, That's probably the that same is. character as like um, uh, in Fen Huang Dan Song, you see often like a Mi Lan Xiang. Mi Lan Xiang, yeah. Xiang, aroma. Yes. Right? Perf and translated here is perfume, a little bit confusing, especially the capital. That off. Yeah, so that's the name of the tea, mm. Xiang Hong Cha. Ah. And uh, later on, it talks about a little capital brick tea. It's kind of a pressed, uh, uh, <laughs> pressed uh, black tea. Xiao Jin Zhuan, little capital mm -hmm. brick tea. I guess uh, that's pretty good. It's just uh, different uh, when you see the name and got translated word by word. It's yeah. really awkward. It's kind of like it's just, Beijing. I totally agree with people. Right. Yeah, right. Beijing, if North you call capital. a North capital, it's like, uh, like how about Shanghai, this? Upper Sea. Like, uh, right. it's just weird. But yeah. at a certain point, like people say Dragon Well, uh, we're so used to it, it doesn't feel so weird. Yeah, yeah. It's just a habit, I think. And last bit is the interesting thing, which the English was totally perfect, right? Sometimes flow and sometimes sinks. If when you, brewed. Yeah, when brewed. So if your if your uh, mind went to leaves floating and sometimes sinking and sometimes floating, because you've probably noticed when you guys brew tea, sometimes the leaves start out at the top and sink to the bottom. Sometimes they start at the bottom and rise to the top. Sometimes they kind of do a little bit of both uh, and they move around. I thought it was sort of, oh, that's sort of interesting to mention that in mm. the context of a pressed black tea. Didn't get it. I was like... So this is totally off what it say. Uh, it's uh, trying to translate a tea term, which is hard, under, totally understandable. It's sa mian sa di. This uh, phenomena you would, sa, especially sa mian, this phenomena you wouldn't see that so much in black tea anymore as uh, uh, pressed black tea is not very trendy right now. Mm. So what you would see is in poor and not necessarily currently poor because the poor processing market is fully open. So everybody press, they don't, all times when there was a standard in terms of how to produce a poor, how to press cake and everything, mm -hmm. um, there is a industry practice called sa mian sa di, especially sa mian, meaning that uh, using a different material, usually a better material, cover the top of a poor tea cake. Mm -hmm. So this is not about cheating or stuff. What tea it is, mm. is known. This is just like, uh, you know, you buy 50 ml of, uh, 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 say, face cream, and it comes in super heavy glass. There's no cheating. There's always a 50 ml. You are not going to say this jar feels like 2 kilo, but right, it only right. has 50 ml. That's a great ml. metaphor, yeah. You know, it's more like a beautifying thing to do. Yeah. So yeah. it's a regular practice, mm. It's uh, and it's a very standardized, meaning that certain teas, certain formulas with is uh, doing samian with a certain grade of tea is very clear. That's why a lot of times when we look at those antique poor teas, not uh, or aged poor teas from the 70s, 80s, or even earlier, just by the picture, you know, they're fake because it doesn't meet the the standard at that time. You can tell it's a mm. fake by a counterfeit by uh, modern people who really didn't study much of that because they're you know, shooting every for the recipe, rustic look, right? Yes, they just care about the look old, it looks so rustic and uh, mm. uh, that kind of thing. But for God, at that time, everything has a standard. If you said you were that Shenpu or Ti Wu Sar or something, their make is different. Their, how they look are different. What's on the surface, the grades right. and stuff are different. Mm. So um, yeah, just want to point out that nowadays, if you talk about the Sa Mian, mostly you would uh, learn that from Puar mm -hmm. area. Mm. I was so interested when you were explaining that to me that even, you know, a specific grade of the finished Puar would be using a specific Samian layer or that, that beautiful layer. It's not going to be super good. It's not going to be like just a little bit, like there's a specific zone for mm -hmm. it. So it becomes very, and that, again, that was that time that kind of threw me off in the previous question where there was pretty good control over quality and those nuances were not uh, taken lightly. Mm. Um, so very interesting stuff there. 
very interesting. Yes. And that, I'm just going to go back. That's it, guys. Yeah, I want to go back to it. the book. So here we are at the end. The rest is the pinion. There's a beautiful picture. I'll show them the picture. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't know. It says it's a... It's the old times. What did it say? It's a step in French? the preparation of the le tea leaves. The roulage. I guess rolling. Oh, um, is that rolling? Uh, I'm not sure because I don't know the French translation, but it's it, roule is uh, to roll. Ah. So it would be the rolling, the roulage. Okay, um, okay. So again, uh, probably, I wonder if that was inserted by the, uh, by the French Agricultural Society. I don't know why it's translated suddenly in French. I want to shout out though, coming back to the, um, you briefly mentioned Michael Salt. We didn't mm. mention him in the introduction, but since we've wrapped up tea classification in theory and practice, um, uh, we say this in just about every episode, but a uh, tremendous effort by the original translator, Michael Salt of Cambridge Absolutely. University. He did a fantastic job. So this is not about nitpicking his little errors. It's just to add another layer of clarity mm -hmm. to an already fantastic job, bringing mm -hmm. a seminal document in Chinese tea right. into context for us English speakers and English yes. readers. Cannot uh, thank him enough for that effort and thank the uh, Agricultural Society for posting it. I just wanted to throw that out since Absolutely. we're wrapping and up. And you guys have probably noticed, even when I'm trying to explain those tea terms, it's, it's really, I see how wordy I am and stuff. It's really yeah. hard. Yeah. But he Absolutely. put that in very concise, clear Beautiful use of language. English. Absolutely. And he didn't have a Chinese tea person to explain those details to him. So that's just unimaginable <laughs> kind of a work for me. All right, guys, so we'll dive back. We'll check out your comments. Before I do, if you thought any of that was useful or good, I'm going to, again, do the YouTube beg for thumbs up again. So <laughs> hit the thumbs up, yeah. please, if you haven't already. I know you can only do it once. That's good enough. Once is good enough. Um, but I got to do that to be a good uh, YouTube person. Check out the comments. And guys, don't run away because, of course, coming up soon is our 50th episode celebratory <laughs> birthday I keep thinking 50th that. episode celebratory tea trivia coming up very soon um, let's have a quick check of the questions mm -hmm. oh yeah forgot the brew sometimes use a timer sometimes forget the timer there seems to be right? no, there's no always way. a step that you can forget <laughs> yeah there's no way to escape that so Lolo you're not alone um, so low and time signature he tried twinnings or maybe Lipton smoked black tea in 2002 it was very mm. good i can only imagine how delicious the real mm yeah i couldn't suggest to try out our top grade lap song it's mm. uh we often uh if we're brewing it at a tea festival or whatever in person people come up what are you brewing we say it's lap song oh i don't like lap song even uh, in the tea circles like uh, yes. not a new people but uh, yep. has been in tea uh, the circle in North America for I would quite say a while, especially and... people in tea circles. I guess so, because they really have that they uh, have mind that, block. That tar bias. lap song, right? Mm. And the bias. So we say, well, if you're willing to step out, we, uh, you know, maybe just give this one a shot. See if it can, not try to change your mind, but maybe this one will be different. Every tea is different. They mm. try it. And I would say in the sort of order of eight to nine times out of ten, you know, I have seen people put it back down like, no, I can't do the smoke. Mm. But... Eight to nine times out of ten, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so sweet. There is smoke, but it's mm -hmm. really balanced. That's a key word. Yes. And that is a key characteristic of Chinese term, right? <laughs> I keep saying Chinese term. It's a long and dry long and very sweetness. Mm. And that the pine was smoky. It's a balance. Come on, give us the Chinese term. Isn't there a Chinese saying? When we're driving around town, we will just pass some random thing. You know, maybe there's a police at the side or this something going on. Oh, we have a saying for that. About, about five or six times a day. I love saying for everything. I love it. And I love it. I love a saying for, for those things. We have rough ones and eloquent ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and some very poetic ones as well. Yes. All anyway. right. And Lolo says uh, there's a lap song from a, a local tea franchise, Turning Point, that made me search for better tea because mm. they smoked it the industrial style. <laughs> like, like ham or sausage. Ouch! Ouch! I, I often hear when people talk about lapsang burnt tires, right? That is not what you're looking for. You know, you yeah. want that long and balanced sweetness. And Bodique was the first favorite. Awesome. Back in 2010. Nice. Way back in the day. All right. Memories, right? All right, guys. So, um, 
That is cool. I think, guys, I think. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for? I is don't it know. 10 questions? It is 10 questions today. So we normally do, uh, we normally do five questions. Okay, for I'm trivia, off work now. <laughs> but, uh, well, we don't know. We don't know what the camera is going to do. Oh, right, we never right. quite know. But today's tea trivia is going to be a 10 question super episode. If I can make things work here, which I can, I always seem to be able to do it. So guys, here we go. Bye -bye. Sunday tea book. <laughs> Ayo. Oh, we're we're full meal. We're everywhere now. Last week was a what's going to happen, guys? Is there's going to be a question pop up on the screen. You're going to enter the answer. Take a guess. Answer one to four. If you don't know, take a guess. Put yourself out there. If everybody's going one way and you don't know, go the other way. You never know. We're just having fun. We're gonna. It's our fiftieth episode, so we got five bonus questions, and Sunday tea trivia time starts now. Phil's favorite tea, Shui Xian, hails from this region. Is it one, and C? Is it two, Wu Yi? Is it three, Zheng Ping? Or is it four, Suzhou? Where does Phil's favorite tea hail from? Like I said, take a guess. This one's a little bit cute. Like, I don't know, I've said it. I think we kind of maybe alluded to this during the show. If not, certainly in the pre-roll, it was exposed mm. fully. We briefly mentioned now where it is from. Yes, yes. So just take a guess. The magical computer will capture your answer and keep track of all your right and wrong answers. And at the end, we have no prizes for you except for <laughs> to say that you're all amazing. That's just how no we roll. Price. Oh, the first uh, the first guesses are rolling in. Bodique uh, steps out with a with a submission of Wu Yi. Where does Shui Xian come from? Could be some lag, maybe a bunch of other ones. Kiel throws down a number three for Zheng Ping. All good guesses, all good guesses. Lolo, oh, we're getting a nice coverage of the full spectrum here. Who Way is going to go. guess four? Yes, we only need someone to step out and guess four and we'll have a complete coverage. Ooh, time signature goes with NC. And Ooh. way to go, uh, Bodique. You got it. It comes from Wu Yi. Mm. That is where Shui Xian come from, comes from. It is a rock tea. And uh, good guess, everybody. Don't worry. You'll have lots of chances to redeem yourself as we work our way through our 50th episode, Tea Trivia Time. <laughs> Long pause, huh? Oh, oh, the question changed and I didn't notice. <laughs> What I was thinking of is I forgot the beginning music. Whoops. The oh, key step right. in processing black tea according to tea classification and theory and practice is, okay? The key step in processing black tea according to tea classification and theory and practice is, is it one, withering? Is it two, kill green? Three, drying? Or four, wet reddening? Oh, Kyo got a little bit mixed up. He thought three was Wu Yi. Ooh. Right, I almost read them wrong too, actually, Kiel. That almost happened to me as I read the number and the answer. Mm. I almost went like that like way instead that. of this way. Yeah, yeah. And I almost gave the wrong number, but I'm pretty sure I didn't because I almost had the same trip. Maybe I did though, I have no idea. All right, guys, a few moments left to guess or to know the key step in processing black tea according to tea classification in theory and practice. Is it withering, two, kill green, three, drying, or four, wet reddening? Here come the answers streaming in now. We seem to be unifying. Ooh. You guys were paying close attention. That's one disadvantage to doing it at the end. <laughs> but it is an advantage. And we have a nearly full sweep. I am going, I'm going to give you guys a little clap for that. Aww. It's okay, don't worry. Um, oh, Kiel got a little bit. Kiel, you, I'm giving you the win, Kiel, because you got it right. right. It just saw the number three in your, in your um, other comment, and that's Didn't why they registered. Didn't know was so wrong. sensitive. Very sensitive. So I'm, a, I apologize, <laughs> Kiel. You got that one right. We give you a plus one at the end. Okay, I'll, I'll put that in my notes. <laughs> Next question. The first book translated during Sunday Tea Book. We've been biting our tongues the whole episode just Ay for this yo. question. The first book translated during that's Sunday why. Tea Book was was it one, the classic of tea by Lu Yu. Was it two, China Tea by Jian Li Wu? Three, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy? Or four, <laughs> Treatise on Tea by Emperor Hui Zhong? The first book translated during Sunday Tea Book. That's right, a good number of our episodes. This is our second document. Tea Classification mm. and Theory and Practice was the second document in, uh, in Sunday Tea Book. The first document was one of these 
Now it's time for you to let us know. I don't know, let us know if you know the answer. <laughs> Take a guess, one through four, was it one? The classics of tea. I always put an S on that, the classic of tea. Yeah, Kiel, I don't know if you caught my explanation, but it caught your first number three and your I thought three was Wui, and then it didn't pick up on your later submission of four, so mm. be careful with the old numbers. When you're, oh, way to go, uh, three out of six people got the right answer. It was China Tea by Jian Li Wu. Um, you can check out all those episodes on our website. They are all available. It is a great resource. As we mentioned, even during this one, there's a great one that explains the various um, types of black tea. Um, and we'll be putting the link to that down below uh, a little bit later. But for now, next question. Li Chun is the loony solar term that refers to, is it one, Ooh. the first day of summer? Is it two, the last day of summer? Is it three, the first day of spring? Or is it four, the last day of spring? What is Li Chun? You're really accurate. Loony solar. Mm. That's very accurate. Yeah, I almost put solely lunar. But then I realized <laughs> that's not even a thing. Solely lunar. Ah, so what is Li Chun? This is, um, so if you're not familiar with the Luni Solar Calendar, it is the Chinese calendar has these key dates. Um, and actually, if you check out our most recent video, you'll notice that the ladies that Jian Li is talking to in the field only use that calendar. Why? Because it's, it's very specific to key agricultural events, agricultural turning points, when to plant, when to harvest, when to blah, 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 right? It's a very much a very practical and still today a very solid calendar uh, for farming. So I thought it might be cool. And a lot of our tea terms, Ming Qian, blah, 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 come from the Luni Solar Calendar. So it's always cool to know a little bit about it. Whoa, Ooh. way to go. Uh, Bodique got the Bodique right answer the with right the first answer. day of spring. And good guess, everybody. Way to put yourself out there and take a stab at it. Awesome work. Way to go. It is the first day of spring. I don't think the last day of is generally uh, regarded by that, that calendar. I threw it in there as a bit of a red herring, but mm -hmm. I'm not even sure. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the start of summer. Start up, right? So folks, here we go. We're plowing our way through the questions. I feel like today is... We would... Okay, sorry. No, go that's ahead. okay. We would go normally ahead. be at the end, but we've got bonus questions, lots more to come. Next question is, what is the simplest way to tell the quality of a tea? Is it one, hold it up to a bright light? Is it two, brew it with boiling water? Is it three, inspect it under a microscope? Or is it four, cold brew it for 72 hours? I feel like there's some lag in there with the questions and answers. And mm. I see a bunch of uh, answers. Somehow the app, we have a really <laughs> automatic yeah. uh, though uh, crabby app that yeah. doesn't really perform perfectly. And sometimes Yeah, it sometimes misses. Up. Like right now, sometimes if you answer after the screen change, it'll be okay, but sometimes not. So you definitely want to get your answers in during the first screen, if possible. But yes, what is the simplest way to uh, tell the quality of a tea? Mm. Somebody said dong pian. I don't know what that means. Uh, winter tea. Oh. All right, we got answers rolling in. Lots of people uh, taking number two as the nice. option and whoa I'm gonna give you guys a win for that everybody Mac McMillan said inspect it under a microscope that is a great idea but it's not quite the way we recommend but maybe it would work get a win <laughs> no that's enough I feel like a lot of answers are missing oh really yeah yeah, yeah. you see after that uh, probably... just remember guys, Sorry, guys you're all winners in my book even mm. if the computer doesn't know it I know it she knows it, we all know it. So keep on playing, keep on entering. Who knows when the computer will pick up. <laughs> Here is the next question. Why is Gen T Ming Chen Not Long Jing called Not Long Jing? So we have a tea called Not Long Jing at here at Gen T. Why do we call that Not Long Jing? Is it one, because it doesn't look or taste anything like Long Jing? Is it two, because the leaf is not the right color? Is it three because it is not from the Longjing area? Or is it four because Phil is a logistician? <laughs> that was a little joke about not. <laughs> when we first came out with it, I wanted to just put a bar over Longjing and, I, and we realized nobody will know what that bar over Longjing means, not Longjing. Who knows, maybe nobody. It's good, it could be a marketing 
Do you remember that design. from uh, from you know not you know not X union with X and all that? Anyway, forget about it. All right, guys, put in your guesses. Who knows? Hopefully, the computer will pick it up. Hopefully, the lag isn't too bad. Hopefully, everything will work out. Uh, yo. Yeah, lots of answers. Computer. They're just rolling in now. But the uh, it only grabbed you too. It only grabbed Bodik and Kiel. So you are the guys who got it right. But I see that tons of tons people, of you Lolo, guys got, got it right. right. I'm going to call you out. Simmerji got it right. Just a little bit. To, for whatever reason, the lag is killing the computer. But you guys are all winners. Mm. And I'm going to try and shout out your uh, your great answers if yeah. I can notice them. Time signature, Time signature got it right. Time signature was right. But we're super on to the next question now. So... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's going on with you the You know what? Because the big screen is spending a lot of the bandwidth to... Just to transmit us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's probably true. It's the most embarrassing part. All right, folks. Here we go. Ayo. I saw at the beginning of the broadcast... You pick up our... Right, Ayo. Stuff, Ayo. I saw at the beginning Mac McMillan has... He enjoyed this video. So I... Uh, big expectations for you, Mac McMillan, to get this right. one right. Our most recent video is about Thanks. this tea from this location. So a two-part. This tea... From this location. Is it Gu Zhu Zisun from Henan? Is it Bilo Chun from Jiangsu? Is it Gu Zhu Zisun from Zhejiang? Or is it Anji Bai Cha from Zhejiang? Our mm. most recent video, which if you haven't seen it, is a great video. Go and check it out. Um, I will also put the link to that down below. That is a video of Jian Li in. Uh, and there's a series, there's a bunch of them recent from 2021, generally traveling around China. Very interesting if you want to get a look at the tea pro production facilities, get a look at the tea fields, uh, chat with pluckers, chat with farmers with Jenny. Uh, Jen does a great job. Whoa, way to go everybody. <laughs> Subtitling those. So you'll be able to uh, read along as she speaks in Chinese. So it looks like plenty of folks got it right. Nice, I'm trying to see nice. if anybody got missed. Time signature is on the board with this one. That's good. Um, yeah, it seemed to grab it, even though Bodiques came in late. So way to go, guys. Uh, it is Guju Zisun from, uh, oh, the answer's gone and I forget. Zhejiang, <laughs> Zhejiang. Um, but here we go. Uh, question, uh, next question, guys. Which two editions of Charan Magazine are available for your reading pleasure? Is it 2017 and 2018? Is it two, 2019 and 2020? Is it three, 2018 and 2019? Or is it four? There is only one edition of Charan Magazine. <laughs> Ay caramba. Oh, that's a good one. We should take that one instead of I.O. Ay caramba. Where, where does ah, that it's Bart. Go? I don't know. It's an old expression that just means ah. like kind of like how we use I.O. But more like a shock or like, oh, wow. Oh, nice. The timing for the answer. Yeah, the timing yeah. is somehow way off today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I take no totally responsibility. Agree. The only <laughs> responsibility I will take is to tell you guys that you're all awesome, no matter what this computer thinks. I don't agree with it whatsoever. I could Google that. You could Google them all, and I don't mind if you do, but it might make it too easy. Simmerji throwing out an answer number two. Lolo and Kale coming in with three. Looks like the lag is getting a little bit better. And uh, which two editions of Charan Magazine are available? Of course, you go to our website, you go to the Charan page, and you enter your email address. Way to go, everybody. Four out of five, and probably even more, because the leg is so bad with a magic <laughs> computer. Doing great. Episode 50, T Trivia Time, is going great. Nothing's going to get me down. I'm just riding the wave. Mm. He likes I.O. I like I.O. Even spelled it. Nice. All right, guys, we're getting there. We're getting there. Like... This is uh, the tea trivia is wrapping up shortly. We still got a couple questions left. Next okay. one is related to black tea again. Black tea was invented in <laughs> the mid 16th century. Two, 1879. Three, 1200 AD. Or four, the mid 17th century. And for those of you wow. that are terrible at correlating centuries with the actual years, I put the actual years in brackets. Mm. I always get mixed up about which way to go, up or down. Turns out it's down. I had to Google it. Literally had to Google <laughs> it. Cool. Uh, a bunch of random questions with some tea questions. I like how you mix things up. Mixed it up. I mixed it up real good. Answers rolling in. Mac McMillan should be safe this time. He was very quick to pull, to quick on the draw with his mm. submission of one. Um, Simmerjeet says we should do this on Discord. Uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know if we could. I'll, uh, I'll consider that for sure. Lolo puts in number two. And Time Signature guesses the future. <laughs> Woo, little space-time warping going on in Time Signature's uh, neck of the woods. 
Luckily, his first guess didn't have any numbers in it or he'd be in big trouble. <laughs> and, whoa! Ooh. Did anybody guess four? Oh, I'm gonna oh do it. Oh my god! Good try, guys! Way to go! You gave it your ball, but nobody got the right answer. <laughs> Um, first question that nobody that I stumped everybody. I wasn't sure I would stump everybody there, but yay me! <laughs> All right, here we are. We're gonna wrap up with this final question. The last episode of Sunday Tea Book Season One Ooh. is: Is it one next week? Is it two two weeks from now? Is it three today? Or is it four? There will be no last episode of Sunday Tea Book. Give us your guess. <laughs> Give us your guess. When do you think the last episode of Sunday Tea Book Season 1 is? Is it going to be next week? Is it going to be in two weeks? Is it today? Or is it four? There will be no last episode. <laughs> what a I tricky think, question. I don't know. I think Mac McMillan just wants this to be over. He threw out three <laughs> today. Time signature. There we go. There will be no last episode. Boutique. There we go. We're hearing some love now. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It's okay. Heartbroken, it's okay. Eh? Heartbroken indeed. <laughs> when will the last episode of Sunday Tea Book Season 1 be? Will it be next week or in two weeks? Is it going to be today? Or Ooh. there will be no last episode? Mm. I think a, actually they're playing the ball. Yeah. yeah, it's tie. Four. Two guesses for four and two guesses for three. Oh, more oh, three and It's four. now tipped to no last episode. It's 3-3 three, three tie. But the right answer is today. today. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We've had a great time. A question. We've oh, had a great time, but indeed, we've wrapped up two big, two big uh, documents: China Tea by Jian Li Wu, Tea Classification and Theory and Practice by Chen Chuan. Uh, great articles. Here are the totals. Completely wrong. Wow. Bodique is the winner with one, and then Time Signature is in second with two. Something's wrong with the computer. Let me just stop reading off the leaderboard and say that you guys are all winners in I my book. I think you all did a great you job. You guys are the best. We, <laughs> and if you'll notice on the last question. so hard to capture all the answers for the app. That is beautiful, that. Right? So many great answers. So much fun with you guys. That's mm. not where I meant to go. We had a great time. Uh, <laughs> but as you'll notice, today is the last episode of Sunday Tea Book Season, season 1. one. So in season one, just why we are doing this season thing first, we have been done that for 50 uh, episodes, which we... In a row, no yeah, break. Yes, no break, even during Christmas and stuff. I'm super proud of us. They yeah. proved <laughs> that we can come up with a schedule and go live, which early times we were like, uh, yeah, not going to do that. I want to give them some context. <laughs> if you were with us when we first started to go live, we would just pop on YouTube and during the beginning of the pandemic and that's kind of how we got onto this and then we're like, well, should we do something every week? And we were like, I don't think we can do it's it. It's a huge commitment, just a scary to think about, but while well, we did it. And it's been super fun. Yeah, the difference is, I think we also, we choose two interesting uh, materials to uh, talk about. Mm -hmm. Like one is more a beginner friendly, mm -hmm. uh, uh, introduction to Chinese tea, which actually was very helpful and useful according to the feedback that clear up some, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, confusions and questions. And I, second one, sorry. I just want to say about China tea, which was great for beginners. It was still really great for me. That book is actually like a reference manual. You can always go back to it. Great mm. for beginners, but it's got great very pragmatic approach to tea uh, and great for even experienced people to just go back and Make sure you're not getting distracted by this or by that. And what is really pragmatic? What are the, what is the essence of Chinese tea? Mm. Really good re reference material. Yeah. Then we explore a total different thing, which is uh, this tea classification mm. in theory and practice, which is really deep for tea really people because there's a lot of processing tea terms and yep. knowledges and stuff. Uh, it was a very interesting ride. It's a great chance to mm. really talk to people, know where their questions are, and uh, help us out with a lot of uh, translation T terms. So, uh, and I think through these two books, we learned a lot about how we wanted to carry on this. Of course, the Sunday Tea book is not cancelled. We will be keep doing mm. this because oh, I yeah. think it's so valuable. Much fun. Yes, and it's so much fun, so valuable for us to learn and to go through this process. And uh, but the season two 
will be no English translation. That's the huge jump. That's right, a huge right. jump. We're going to jump yeah. into some great documents that are super, um, again, like I say at the beginning, packed with great information about Chinese tea and its culture. Mm -hmm. But this time we're going to dive into all Chinese uh, documents and we're going to uh, basically generate a translation. So we're going to mm. uh, work on how to present it, how to work the logistic of the mm -hmm, life out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also I know, uh, so ever since we started doing this, one of the most requested book <sighs> is... What? The Classic of Tea by That's Lu right. Yu. That's right. And what else do we have, Johnny? Uh, Jen? Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Johnny I'm, or Jen? I have I no idea. I had to other. do a game show That's voice for that. Like a, by far the most requested. And we will be diving into that in mm. season two. So if you are interested. For real? In a different way. Ooh. In a okay. different way. Anyway, we're teasing anyway, so you, so we you'll come back, come back, so I know that's going to work for you. <laughs> that's a slam dunk. Well done. Thank you. Johnny did a great job. Mm. Thank you, Johnny. And I'm back to you, Jim. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, mm. good spot for me to jump in? I'm going to jump in. Um, Not a good co-host. <laughs> no, I'm off. We, no, we are off. <laughs> we just don't know when to jump. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. So Lolo says 50 episodes is a good number. We think mm. so too. Thanks for uh, backing us up. Kiel only found us recently. I remember when you first uh, joined us and we're really glad you're back and it's great to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we, but uh, yeah, you and all the back catalog is there. Even this episode, it will be up. Give us a few days as always. We, uh, we do a little bit of uh, post-processing on it and mm -hmm. then we'll pop that up on the YouTube with all the links that I've mentioned. I will put them in. And uh, so check back. You can always go back and check out those episodes. But right now, I want to just say, uh, do a little bit of a 50. The party's not over yet. It's not over yet. I'm going to... Just uh, before you... Before I dive in. I right? think... Uh, where does that come from? Uh, time signature said do a live Q&A next time. Oh yeah, I saw mm. that and was terrified by that. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were terrified by that. Just crickets, you know. You go to do a Q&A. All right, what's the questions? Anyone? No, what is it? Um... Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the movie. Uh, who, oh, oh, I, I was going to do a, a pop culture reference and it just escaped me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bueller. 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 Right? That kind of thing. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, it didn't work with me. I guess you guys understand him yeah, perfectly. I don't know. Anyways, uh, good, good suggestion. We could think about that. Mm -hmm, we could think mm -hmm. about doing something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like okay. the suggestion. I like it's just, like I said, mm. simply terrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, see if we can conquer our fear. Conquer my fear. It seems like you're not afraid at all. She's fearless, folks. She is fearless. Um, diving in. Okay, I wanted to take a minute and shout out to you guys. 50 episodes seems like a good number. It is a great number, and it would have been impossible without you guys um, finding us like Kill or being with us for so long, coming back week after week. Uh, Simmerjeet and, and you know uh, everybody time signature Mac McMillan Bodique all of you out here who are here today many of you who might be watching this after who have followed us along the way uh, this thing goes out to you too uh, I know you might be circling back maybe you are busy it's a beautiful day out but you're coming back to watch this all of you thank mm, you so much thank you uh, if you're not on the Discord, you know, there's a link down below. I'm not doing that. Discord isn't like a big monetized thing for us. It's just a spot where I want to shout out about the great community that you guys have made that into and even show a little bit here live as part of our, um, I don't know what to call it, our season end party um, <laughs> about some of the uh, stuff that's been shared. Tea pictures. If you like to share your tea pictures with folks, but uh, you know social media is not your jam, or you like to share them in a setting where there's other tea lovers who can actually comment and notice cool things about your teaware, um, you know there's oh a block. It was me. <laughs> anyway, we've pictures like this are thrown up. This one's from Joseph of his setup. I love the uh, the cups and the guy one and the way they are all different colors but kind of match. What is that? Do you have those uh, the form of art, the one behind, use the sound, the one uh, in the front trying to match? Oh no. How do you call that? We call that kung fu movies. 
dub, poorly dubbed kung fu movies. <laughs> oh, just I'm, gonna, I'm gonna Google that for you. <laughs> We've got a picture like this from Dee's Versified, who, uh, of her age, Bao Zhong, you can check out. <laughs> this is so distracting. Keep doing it. It's okay, pretty okay, fun. Okay, I will do that. I will do um, that. You keep talking. Oh, this came up just the other day from Reiner in Germany. Oh, the other thing about this whole experience has been mm. the amount of diversity of uh, cultures and places of origin. Uh, time signature hailing in from Denmark. Um, Reiner's picture of this. Is this a beach tea set or what? This right? just makes me want to go surfing. Lovely color. Um, beautiful colors. Um, we've got folks from all over the USA, all over Canada joining us week after week. So it's really nice to have, uh, oh, Igor from Spain. How could I forget Igor? If you want to hear Igor's drum tracking and keyboard skills, check out um, Welcome to Wee Mountain. No, uh, not welcome to Wee Mountain. Sorry, um, crazy, crazy oolong, oolong train. train. Crazy oolong train features Igor's uh, musician skills. I mean, that's what kind of community is. It's just, it's not. It's all about tea, but it's about everything too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Time Signatures has shared some really awesome, <laughs> crazy hair metal. We're fans of hair metal. He seems to be a great fan of hair metal and pirate metal. He's been <laughs> sending pirate metal over the Discord, so that's been fantastic. Um, and recently he sent this picture of his homemade kombucha from Time Signature MMA. How did it turn out? Um, if you want to know, check out the Discord. I think that one had white tea and oolong tea in it, so uh, it's a great spot. We also have tea memes. I wanted to share a few of the tea memes that you <laughs> so guys have shared. Really cute. Uh, really cute. So for people who want to do a per bit of a personality test and you're a D&D &D nerd as well as a tea nerd, We've got the uh, lawful good all the way to chaotic evil, depending on how you hold your teacup or tea mug. So that popped up on the uh, Discord tea meme section. If you're chaotic evil, you gotta send me a picture on Discord. <laughs> yeah, right, of your, of your burning fingers. And, um, and if, you're, if you're prone to throwing out tea that gets too old, watch out because it might be a puar and you don't want to come home to this family. I just love that one. I love that the little kids both have kitchen knives too. <laughs> Normally not allowed to hold them, but when dad throws out the aged puar, mm, take the 12 inch. This green tea meme comes to us from Igor. How to make a green tea? First, you have to kill green and then my very own tea meme or eliminate rankness. Our not so favorite term for kill green. All right, guys, so that wraps up my little uh, sharing from our Discord channel. I just wanted to do that to kind of say thank you to you guys for making that community so great. Thank you for making this community right here so great. Mm. Thank you for making 50 episodes of Sunday Tea Book possible and uh, for just being so awesome. Um, it's been so fantastic. Yes, such a fun experience and beneficial experience for me. Yes. And you guys helped me out a lot with, uh, you know, what you heard about teachers, your language, your references. Oh, yeah. A lot of times I don't quite understand his uh, pop culture reference. <laughs> and you guys helped me out. That yeah. was really... And not to mention all the help with tricky terms and just getting words straight and mm -hmm. uh, translation help. It's been fantastic. So uh, guys, that wraps up. This is the wrap up of season one. Ooh. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> we're back to random live again. <laughs> yes, so yes. We're not going to disappear. Is, we're off not going to disappear. Map. We're still going to do some lives, and it could be really, really random. So yeah. So if you see it prepared. pop up, uh, so what? This is a good time to say hit that notification bell so you'll know <laughs> when we go live. Because we don't even know when we're going to go live. So you better hit the notification bell, and you'll get a little bing on your phone and you'll be like, ooh, on the subway, press that joint. Be like, oh yeah, you'll be laughing and giggling and sipping tea and everybody else on the train will be like, is that guy crazy? Is he mad? What's going on? Anyway, but you'll be fine. You'll be fine. All right, so yes, All we're right. gonna go back to the random live and mm -hmm. uh, we're not going away. And of course, as Jen said, season two of Sunday Tea Book will be coming up, mm -hmm. diving into some really, really uh, awesome documents and in the format where we're addressing completely Chinese documents. If you have ideas about things that might facilitate that, drop those on the Discord or somewhere Absolutely. too. We'd love to hear from you. Guys, this has been epic. It's been awesome. It's been amazing. Well, thank you for Always been there for us. And until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.